Hello everyone, this is Free Name on YouTube. We're going to look at the Strong Atria app for administering these AX3000 devices, Atria Wi-Fi Mesh AX3000 model Mesh Tria AX3000 UK. I'm using an Android phone, so in the Play Store we want to install and then open the Atria Mesh app by Shenzhen's Guyworth Digital Technology. The details to log in are, unless you've changed them via the web interface or via the app previously, or just admin and admin, it's already filled in the username admin and the placeholder which you can't delete where it says enter admin password you just start typing admin and then sign in. You can add a node but I'm not sure why you'd do that through the app because it's very easy just pressing the WPS button as uh, mentioned within the manual. If you need to see the manual have a look at the first video I made on these um, about unpacking and doing speed tests on them, which has uh, the manual in it. We can see under attached devices what is connected to the mesh system, which is just this telephone that I'm using here. And weirdly, reporting signal strength is low, but uh, I'm right next to it. I suspect if I do a speed test, I'm going to get a gigabit out of it. Yep. So I'm not sure why it's reporting low signal via the app there. Very strange. My network shows you all of the nodes that there are. And you've got the main one, which is this one here. Connected to that is the one I've got in the kitchen. And connected to that is the one that I have in the bedroom. So if press on the main one. It shows you the name and you can change its name to, let's give this a go, office. Attached devices is my phone because I'm right next to it. The role is controller because it's the main one, the main one that's being a router. And backhaul connection is wired because it's plugged into the internet or the network. If we go to this first one, which will be the one that is in the, my kitchen, so I'm going to go into the name, I shall rename that as well. Attached devices zero because there's no other devices to connect. Signal strength medium because it's going through uh, one external wall and a uh, single skin brick wall. Roll is an agent because it's, um, in other words, a satellite of this main one here. And backhaul connection is over 5 gigahertz Wi Fi. We have a quit mesh button which I presume would factory reset it or make it leave this mesh ready to join. Uh, another mesh system if it was going to be taken to another place. Then we have the final one which is in the bedroom which I shall rename that. And similar to the the first satellite we looked at it's an agent and it's connected backhaul via 5 gigahertz. So that's a little map of the network. Under Wi-Fi settings, you can change the name of the Wi-Fi network and the password. At the moment, mine is just the default of the, the first node that I set up. So that's that label there. But if you wanted to make yours a custom name, that's where you'd set it. And also a custom password. Guest Wi-Fi. I have seen reviews that say that if you set up a guest Wi-Fi and then reboot the device, it loses the guest Wi-Fi. We'll give that a go later, um, but I'll blast through the rest of the app and then we'll come back to setting up guest Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi schedule, if you wanted to have it switching wireless on and off on particular days or every week. So if you didn't want your Wi-Fi transmitting overnight, you can set up a schedule here. So I, didn't, I don't want it going from nine o'clock until Oh well, you have to click on save first. Anyway, 9 o'clock in the evening until, for example, 8 o'clock in the morning. And 
and it looks like it's already enabled that uh, schedule which you can toggle on and off each time you go, <laughs> each time you change it it seems to aha well there we go first bug so these devices have performed incredibly well um, but as I suspected the thing that will probably let them down is the app which uh, and the probably the web admin interface so we've already found one bug where the Wi-Fi schedule if you switch that off doesn't switch off who knows whether it would actually apply because it may have ch made that change but actually is um, not uh, just showing it on the app who knows so edit maybe we can remove it at least okay you can at least delete it but maybe the toggle for the function being there for or if you had multiple times and you wanted to change it whether you know different people were staying in the house that toggle function looks like it may not work LED control supposedly you can turn off the lights and indeed that does appear to work if we look at the back of it there's no lights on the back anyway for the network for the indicators on that so nothing to switch off there let's turn it back on LAN settings where you can set um, whether the DHCP server is on or off and the lease time and the IP addresses that it hands out uh, IPs within and also the IP address of the main node itself, the main mesh node or uh, router. Internet settings, mine is DHCP but you can set either a manual DNS while still using DHCP or uh, if you need to set a static IP address you can use static it also supports PPPoE if you are for example on a provider in the UK uh, where you plug into the OpenReach network under system settings the only option you've got there is to change the administration password Mesh restart, which would reboot all of the Wi-Fi points. About, which just shows you details about the app. And then log out, which will take you back to the log on screen. So that's all of the functions within the app. There's nothing else there. Let's try turning on guest Wi-Fi and then see whether it survives a reboot. So we'll call this SkyW guest. And turn on 5 gigahertz as well. Um, open time zero hours maybe that's why people say it disappears because it's a temporary guest network let's leave it on zero hours um, but if this is a timer so you turn on your guest network because you've got somebody visiting for 24 hours and then it switches off that kind of makes sense that maybe when you select zero hours and then reboot the device I know, at least one hour well, that's um, certainly a weird way of dealing with guest networks because what if you wanted it on permanently? Let's just fill in as many nines as we can. See whether it uh, goes totally mad. Oh, okay. So you can't turn on the guest network for more than 72 hours. And I suspect when you reboot the device, it doesn't know or is not clever enough to figure out that it still needs to have the guest network switched on. Here's another phone, let's see if the guest network is available. So the guest network it can be seen, let's see if we can connect to it and then what happens after a reboot. and definitely connected to it so I'm going to physically power cycle this router so the reviews on Amazon were correct the guest Wi-Fi once you reboot the main controller node 
does disappear. Weirdly, this telephone is still able to uh, see and is connected to the guest Wi-Fi, but the mesh is also not set up and working yet, because I think that's what this WPS button, uh, this WPS light means. It's not on, so therefore the configuration hasn't synchronised. That is now on, so I would expect that this guest will disappear very soon. There we go. So, yeah, when you reboot the router or the main node of this Atria setup, you do lose, or it does reset the guest Wi-Fi. Uh, and even then, if you do enable it, the longest that that guest Wi-Fi can be enabled is 72 hours. So if you need multiple Wi-Fi names for your Wi-Fi, or if you'd like your guest Wi-Fi to be on constantly or all the time, then in the current firmware and app version, this is definitely not something that's possible. So there we go. Hopefully that video has been useful to you. If you'd like to see what the web admin interface looks like or unpacking and setting up and then the initial benchmark and speed testing of these devices, there'll be some other videos linked in the description. So take a look at those if you're interested. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers are really helpful. Thank you very much.